All right, I'm standing alongside tonight's number one star, Rhett Picklick. Rhett, four assists, the game tying goal for you, and you get that assist on the game winner. What was working so well for you tonight? Uh, you know, I think it was just sticking to our game plan, and uh, I think everyone kept working hard, so it kind of made my life easier, and maybe came out with a big win. And two goals from defensemen tonight. How good is it to see them help you guys get on the board and contribute offensively? Oh, it's awesome. Uh, for whatever, whenever uh, the defensemen jump into play, I mean, that helps the board so much and uh, creates a lot of offense, so that's good for them. And back again tomorrow night, what are some big takeaways from this one? Thank you, Scott. And obviously, as you know, there's a lot of talent on the ice, but tonight is Muskegon's Got Talent Night, which means a lot of talent off the ice. We have three performers tonight, two singers and a magician. That will be held in the first intermission with some pretty big prizes on the line. So make sure you stick around for that. Welcome into your Husky Hockey Weekend Preview. I'm your host, Madison Golden. And joining me today is Mick Haddon from TheRinkLive.com. Thanks for joining us again, Mick. Thank you for having me. And before we touch on the series against Miami, let's talk a little bit about the Duluth series, many of which called it a preview of the national championship game. What did you think of St. Cloud State's performance as they got the sweep over Duluth? Well, I think that, you know, one of the... Well, it was a weekend of conference matchups for the WCHA and a showcase of several of the top ranked teams in women's college hockey. A weekend filled with a coaching milestone, first period domination, and a down to the wire overtime. Okay. And this marks the fourth consecutive win for you guys. How do you plan to carry the success these next few home games? All right, so since this is the last series before the holiday break, we are going to decorate some Christmas cookies today. All right. Perfect. <laughs> No, no, we, we, gotta, we gotta decorate them first before you can eat them. What do you mean? You have to put some decorations on, you can't eat a bland cookie. This tastes great. <laughs> and two top opponents these past few nights, but you come out with a win in both. What, what was the message from Coach before both of these games? Uh, he, he always had come. Yeah, Scott, I love the shades. I am glad that you got into the theme too. As you can tell, it is 80s night, and we hope that you guys all came out decked out in your best 80s gear because we will be doing an 80s costume contest with three great prizes. Let's talk a little bit about this upcoming series against the Miami Redhawks. The St. Cloud State Huskies are heading in 4-0 in conference play. How crucial will this series be for them? Well, I think, you know, in, any points in the, in the... Welcome into your WCHA Weekend Recap Show. I'm your host, Madison Golden, and let's begin with the scary showdown between the Wisconsin Badgers and the Minnesota Gophers. But beware, you're in for some spooky surprises. Good game. And you guys came on out on top tonight against Green Bay. What was the big difference maker in tonight's game compared to last night's game? Uh, obviously. And back next weekend, what can we expect to see from the Lumberjacks? Same thing. So if I hit any part of inside of the goal, I get a point. But you have to do what I tell you to do to All get right, your cool. point. Shot number one here. We'll see if I can even lift the puck. <laughs> All right, so, uh, you know, we'll count that. Yeah. I didn't get it off the ground. The Muskegon Lumberjacks Charitable Foundation does tremendous work for the youth work community. All season long, Jacks players and coaches go into our schools to help elevate creative skills and development. Our 50-50 raffle donates up to $500 per game, so make sure you fly down one of our sellers tonight. Quite a successful career here. And Brian, you obviously have had a huge impact on this community, but what is this hockey community? to you over these years. Well, WCHA fans, it was a weekend full of split sweeps and hat tricks as there were three players from the WCHA who finished with a hat trick on the weekend. And with just 13 games remaining in the regular season, what's going to be key to make a final push for playoffs? And we did see Ryan Paling go down in the first period. Any update on that injury? And if he doesn't end up playing tonight, how do you see Coach Larson adjusting the lines? All right, Ibarra, you guys came out with quite a bit of intensity early on, and you followed that intensity all the way through with that overtime victory. How good was it to get that one tonight? I mean... And penalties, obviously, a key factor in tonight's game. What would you like to see your team really hone in on and focus for tomorrow night? Thank you, Scott. And yes, as Lee mentioned, tonight is Police Night, presented by Little River Casino Resort. So we're so happy to have all former and current police officers joining us this evening, along with Scout Night. So we have Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts troop once again. We're thrilled to have you, and we hope you all make lots of noise throughout the game. And obviously, Dubuque, a tough opponent, second in the Eastern Conference. What are your big takeaways from this one to make sure you guys get back in the win column again tomorrow? Welcome to another episode of On the Box. This week, my guest is going to be Husky goaltender David Rennick. 
Wow, these pads are heavy. Oh, I don't know how you do it. You had already mask on. <laughs> yeah. Safety first. Okay, so we're gonna get started. So we'll actually take a seat. I'll step off my box. All right. <laughs> All right, so what do I start with first? Uh, we need to start with pants. Okay. Now we need skates. Okay, skates next. So how old were you when you started? Uh, I was actually five years old and my father brought me to the ring. So in Slovakia, before every practice, like players had to do like skating warm up, but I was really lazy to skate. So <laughs> I, I was like, ah, I'm going to, be, I'm going to try to be goalie. And as yeah. far as getting hit with a puck, where would you say is the most painful spot? Like right here. Your like your forearm yeah, right there. Yeah. How do you do this? Oh, that's a... oh it's not even the right way. Look at yeah. that. <laughs> Just loop it through. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. This would take me like three hours to get ready for a game, I think. <laughs> okay, so what's next? Next is a uh, chest protector. This goes over your head? Yes, over your head. Okay. And this you is just, going to... I yes. just like stick my arm through it? Yeah, just... Okay. Like nice, that? I will help you with just... Is that how you do it right? Well, let me see. Yeah, like wow. this. That's all right. All right. Jersey. Jersey. I should probably help you. <laughs> right? Do you do this, but you do this all by yourself. Right? Yes. Oh my goodness. Wow. How does it feel? It feels heavy. Now mass safety. Okay. Most important thing. Thanks to me for letting me borrow it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, and All I right. think you should be ready. Okay, well I think David, next time you're gonna have to show me some moves on the ice now that I know how to get dressed. So thank you so much for joining me on this episode of On The Box and we'll see you back next time.